and welcome to Mrs. Palmer's Fix. I'm Mrs. Palmer and I'm going to read you a story. Today I am at the Grand Canyon uh, and I thought since I was here today I would read Grand Canyon by Jason Chin. Uh, it is a Caldecott honor book. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's a really long book but we're going to compare some of the pictures to the Grand Canyon behind me. Um, let's see. So. Rivers carve canyons. When they cut down into the earth, canyons grow deeper. As weathering and erosion break apart their walls, canyons grow wider. Over time, rivers wash all the eroded material away. These processes have been at work for millions of years, relentlessly excavating the mighty gorge known as Grand Canyon, which is right behind me. So, Grand Canyon is one of the largest canyons in the world. It is 277 miles long, as much as 18 miles wide, and more than a mile deep. But it's much more than just a big hole in the ground. It's home to an astonishing variety of plants and animals. The canyon is much hotter and drier at the bottom than it is at the top. Because of this, different groups of plants and animals, or ecological communities, are found at different elevations in the canyon. The hottest part of the canyon is at the very bottom, a thousand foot deep chasm called the Inner Gorge. And I think we're gonna skip ahead. Um, you can see the river, can't see the river for, from where I am unfortunately but maybe maybe we'll see it later but in the rocks as you're walking it says above the basement layer you'll reach the Grand Canyon supergroup here you may find ripple marks uh, preserved in the stone clues like this tell us what this place was like when the rock formed they were like windows or they are like windows to the past. So this is Grand Canyon 1.2 billion years ago when the only living things on earth were microbes such as algae and bacteria. Although they were too small to see, these primitive organisms filled the oceans and were some of the earliest life forms on the planet. So these ripples of sand are in the rocks behind me. If you look over here, is a fossil. And it says these animals are living on the rock layer called the Bright Angle Shale, which formed more than 200 million years after the Grand Canyon supergroup. Um, trilobite fossils in the rocks tell us that this spot once lay beneath the sea. So, it used to be water all over this place. Uh, it says this is Grand Canyon 515 million years ago. By this time in Earth's history, many multicellular plants and animals had evolved. Soft-bodied jellyfish floated above, above clam-like um, brachiopods and tiny hyloliths. Some of the first creatures on Earth with shells. Trilobites, the first animals known to have had eyes, roamed the seafloor. You can see there's the trilobite right there. Around them, warm-like creatures burrowed in the sediment, sediment that eventually transformed into the bright an angel shell. And, let's see. Over here, we have some more. This is at the top of the slope is the rock layer called the Hermit Formation. Fossils in the Hermit tell us that long ago, this spot was home to huge dragonflies with eight inch wingspans. This grid is Grand Canyon 280 million years ago. By this time, life was flourishing on land and trees, ferns, fish, amphibians, and reptiles had evolved. The sea had retreated from the region and rivers flowed across the landscape. Seed ferns and conifers grew along their banks and amphibians left their tracks in the mud, mud that eventually transformed into the Hermit Foundation or formation. Over here, you can see prints in the in the rock. So these cliffs have been carved from the uh, Coconino sandstone. 
Fossil footprints in the rock tell us that on this spot 275 million years ago, an early reptile rocked across huge windswept dunes. Right there. With little water, life here would have been difficult, but the desert wasn't entirely barren. Among other species that called it home were scorpions, millipedes, and spiders. As the desert wind whipped across the landscape, sand piled up the thin layers. Today those layers are preserved in the Coconino sandstone as thin angled surfaces called cross beds. And let's see. We'll do one more. So the Khabib's limestone uh, cliffs are full of marine fossils that tell us about life here 270 million years ago, which looked like this when the ocean again covered the land. Uh, fossils in the Khabib Formation tell us a complex of a complex ecosystem. The seafloor was home to sea lilies and bryozoans, sponges and coral. Trilobites and brachiopods lived alongside them, while nautiloids and as many as 40 species of shark patrolled the water above them. Many of these creatures, such as coral and brachiopods, Heart, had hard shells. When they died, their shells piled up on the seafloor and eventually transformed into the limestone of the Khabib Formation. So imagine sharks living behind me. Anyway, I hope you liked this story. I hope you like what's behind me. If you did, check this book out at your local library. Thanks. Bye.